Am I the a-hole for refusing to name my daughter after my husband's dead wife? I have been married to my husband for three years now. It's an extremely healthy relationship and I couldn't wish for anything more. He was previously married at 35 for a year and a half before his wife sadly passed away of severe hypoxia from pulmonary edema. They were dating for over four years and according to the way he talks about her, they were straight out of a fairy tale. His late wife was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy a year into their marriage and was given medication to manage her symptoms however she was always expecting her death, even though doctors have assured her she could lead on a normal life. However she was later again diagnosed with pulmonary edema, which where she started to prepare herself for death. She assured my husband that he could marry later on and she'd want him to lead on a normal life. She however requested if she could be named after a daughter, if he ever gives birth to one as she's always wanted one, and was unsuccessful with having any children. Before we got married, my husband of course let me know all of the above however he failed to mention his late wife's request. I deeply empathized with him, and I was there whenever he needed support. Anyhow, I'm currently pregnant with our first child and we're both over the moon. When we came to decide for baby names for our daughter, he stood firm on naming her on his late wife. As much as it was expected, I refused, I told him I couldn't put that burden on our unborn daughter as to him she'll always remind him of his late wife and he'll fail to see her as his daughter. That's when he let me know of the pact. He made with his wife and he feels as if that's the only way he could pay her a tribute. Now I haven't given him a response, I haven't told him how I felt about it. I just told him we'll see as it's still early to decide. I genuinely can't help but feel hurt as it feels like after all these years, he'd still choose his late wife over me. I somewhat feel as a rebound and although I can't victimize myself in this situation however the way he insisted on naming our daughter made me feel inferior. I also just can't let him pay tribute like that as our daughter will always feel like his first wife to him, if that makes sense. What should I do in this situation and am I in the wrong? Am I the a-hole for not making my son forgive my brother after he was uninvited from his wedding? Six months ago, my son Leo decided to cut off my brother Jack. Now my mom, brother, sister-in-law, and other family members want me to make my son forgive him to keep the peace. For a little bit of context, I'm a single dad. My family has always helped me in many ways, mostly babysitting when Leo was younger and even before my son was born. We were all very close. We all live relatively close to each other, so we've been able to keep in touch with weekly gatherings, spending the holidays together, etc. Everyone loves my son, and my son loved them back. However, my brother Jack was always my son's favorite person. Back when my son was three to four years old, Jack and his wife had more flexible jobs than me think freelancing VS and 9 to 5, so they always volunteered to look after Leo, something he loved. Almost every month they would take him to the zoo, or the aquarium, or they'd even go camping with him. As my son grew older, he started to develop the same interests as my brother like video games, photography, and music. When Leo was nine, he told me he wanted to have the same career as his uncle. This is all to say, they were extremely close. Last year, my brother informed me that he and his GF Mary were getting married. I knew that neither Jack nor his GF believed in marriage, so when I asked them about it, they told me it was all Karen's idea who was my sister-in-law's mom. Because Jack and Mary didn't care much about the wedding and since Karen was paying for it, they let her plan everything, from the venue to the food, music, etc. Karen decided to plan a destination wedding at a fancy resort. In July of last year, we received the invitation and it was addressed to both me and my son. I even had a plus one if I wanted. And as soon as the website went up, I tried to make a reservation for our hotel room. I should clarify that I had to call the hotel to make my reservation because the link wasn't working and I really couldn't risk not getting a room. When I received the email confirmation, it said room for two adults. But I didn't think much of it and just assumed it was an error due to the language barrier with the hotel guy. I also bought the plane tickets for us around the same time. Fast forward to January, less than a month before the wedding, when my sister-in-law called me crying saying that Karen had made a mistake with the venue. Apparently the resort was for adults only so they didn't allow anyone younger than 16. My son was 13 at the time. I asked her if it would be possible for Leo and me to stay in another hotel, but they told me the whole resort was child-free so my son wouldn't even be allowed to attend the ceremony or the reception. I was disappointed, 
and I told my sister-in-law I'd talk to my son about it. I knew how excited he was about his uncle's wedding, but she insisted both her and Jack wanted to tell him in person. Honestly, my son was devastated. He started crying as soon as he was told he wouldn't be able to go. He pleaded with them and even offered to give them all of his savings so they could move the wedding. After 30 minutes of this, my sister-in-law got frustrated and just told him that he was being selfish and that this day wasn't about him. Leo eventually apologized and went to his room. After the wedding, my son just stopped talking to my brother. If Jack sent him a message, Leo would just ignore it unless it had something to do with me, for example. He would only reply if Jack asked him to tell me something because he couldn't reach me, etc. On our family gatherings, Leo would only respond to small questions like, can you pass the salt or help grandma with the plates? But he would ignore my brother if Jack or Mary tried to start a conversation or ask him about school, etc. A month after the wedding, Jack and Mary offered to take him for a special vacation during spring break to make up for the wedding, but my son just ignored them and he later told me he didn't want to go with them. It was heartbreaking because I knew how much he wanted to go to that place and I wasn't able to afford it yet, but he stuck to his guns. Something similar happened on Leo's birthday. He asked me if I was planning to throw him a party I'd do it every year and when I said yes he asked me not to invite his aunt and uncle. I tried to convince him to invite them because they're family and they were really sorry but he just said that if they didn't want him on their special day he didn't want them on his. My brother was crying when I told him he wasn't invited. However, things came to a head this past weekend. We were at my mom's house and the conversation of Leo's university came up. My mom asked Leo if he was still planning on going to the same university as Jack and that he should start planning for that, but my son replied that he wasn't interested anymore and he had chosen to study something else. Then my mom said I thought you wanted to be like your uncle and my son just said why would I want to be like him? At this point I intervened and told Leo he didn't have to be so rude but the damage was already done. Both my brother and sister-in-law heard what he said and they left shortly after. Last night my brother texted me saying I was an asshole for letting my son continue with this grudge and he even accused me of being jealous of their relationship and that's why I wasn't doing anything to fix it. I just told him these were the consequences of his actions and that this was 100% his fault by allowing his PO's mother-in-law to plan the wedding when she obviously hated my child. He hung up on me. My mom and some other family members think I should force my son to forgive my brother so we can all move on claiming there was no ill intent and it was just a small mistake. But I don't think I should. My son was clearly hurt and he should be allowed to heal and forgive them only when he's ready. So am I the a-hole.